Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Study Tips You Need for Your IIBS Certification Exam. I'm your host, Liva Rondirasson, and on behalf of IIBA, thanks for joining us today. Today's webinar is a public event. It is designed to deliver practical resources for you as you continue to grow your skill set and deliver value within your organization. When you join IIBA, you become a member of an international association dedicated to developing and promoting the business analysis profession. Your IIBA membership gives you access to a vibrant BA community and resources to support your development and career growth. IIBA is a nonprofit professional association serving the growing field of business analysis. And our goal is to unite a community of professionals to create better business outcomes. As the global thought leader and voice of the business analysis community, IIBA works to maintain global standards for the ongoing development of the practice and certifications. And today's webinar is brought to you by Adaptive US. Adaptive US provides CBAP, CCBA, ECBA, Agile Analysis, Cybersecurity Analysis, and Business Data Analytics Online Trainings, Question Banks, Study Guides, Simulators, Flashcards, Audiobooks, and Digital Learning Packs. We would like to thank Adaptive US for supporting IIBA and the Business Analysis community. And today's presenter is Ellen Mishra. We're happy to have him back. Ellen, Ellen Mishra is the current president and principal trainer at Adaptive US and has over 25 years of professional experience in agile software development, requirements analysis, business analysis and governance, risk and compliance management. Ellen has authored over 20 publications on business analysis and has conducted over 200 workshops in business analysis, requirements management, agile software project management, and Six Sigma. Welcome, Ellen. Uh, thank you, Liva. Uh, do I share my screen now? Uh, yes, I will. Uh... Okay. And let me also turn on the video. Okay, so this one second, Liva. Let me go to the presentation deck and start in in the. How do I go to the this mode? One second. This is one second, Liva. Okay. So now I think it's all set. And let me go full screen. Uh, is it all okay, Liva, now? All okay on my end, Ellen. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Liva. Thank you, Teddy, for uh, another presentation from Adaptive. Uh, let me congratulate all of you, those who have joined us today. We are through a pretty uh, kind of a tense situation that we see around us. Uh, the COVID-19 really has kind of disturbed the entire world. But something good will happen for business analysts, and that is the world will move more and more digital as we move forward. So we business analysts will help organizations to move to the digital world. And I'm really kind of uh, congratulating all of you because you guys have taken time out to join an important event, which will take your career to the next level. So let me just, okay, the video comes here. Let me just kind of, down no worries and then uh, maybe i'll turn it off for a little while okay so what is it that we plan to cover in this webinar the intent is to give you a broad overview of all the six certifications that iiba holds and to be very precise i am the only person probably at this point in time 
who holds all the six certifications from IIBA. So this was my mission for 2020, and I'm glad I completed it almost in the media. And how did I prepare for these exams? Because I have been writing IIB exams for almost last nine years from today, and I have appeared for multiple tests over multiple period of time. So just a quick bit about myself. My name is Alan Mishra. I have mentored more than 5,000 BAs. Of them, 700 plus are IIBA certified, which itself is a great number. I constantly write on business analysis, uh, blogs, books. And fortunately, I have been a practicing BA for more than 25 years. So when I started my career as a BA, we were not called BA. So I started my career as a consultant. Um, then I became an ERP analyst. Um, but they were all related to business analysis, which is what I see today. I continue to perform this role for Adaptive. I also support a lot of our customers as and when they need support in business analysis, either as a practitioner or as a mentor and coach. Uh, I have been lucky enough to work in more than 10 countries. That's one good thing being a business analyst. Uh, you kind of visit your client places as and when they need you. And I have been part of many, many successful projects and a couple of unsuccessful projects as well. Um, I am thankful to IIBA for making me a member of the exam team. And I have been interacting closely with IIBA for a very, very long time. Uh, let me thank IIBA for what they have done for the business analysis community. Uh, it's indeed heartening to see the way the BA profession has come up. About just 20, 25 years back, people even didn't know that a term called business analyst exists. Um, the role of the BA was not clearly defined. Uh, there was no standard method or guidebook prescribed. Um, but today we have great resources on business analysis, uh, mostly coming from IIBA, which is a great input to um, all the business analysts. I trust most of you are members of IIBA. If not, I would recommend you to become a member um, as soon as you can, because the amount of resources that you can receive through IIBA is tremendous. Um, I have read so many books on IIBA online library as part of my consulting ability development or as uh, simply getting better at my work. A uh, little bit about the organization where I work. Uh, I work with Adaptive US and we are uh, possibly world's number one IIBA certification provider. Um, mostly every week about five to six uh, students across the globe complete IIBA certification. Uh, the numbers now are about 700 plus. Uh, hopefully we will touch 1000 by this year end. Um, we are a premier EEP to IIBA, and we offer something very unique among all the training providers with something called success guarantee, which means in case you are not successful in following our approach um, and you still are not successful, we pay the retake fees without any extra cost to you. Uh, we also provide session run guarantee, which means all our sessions are guaranteed to run. If they don't run for any reason, we will pay you back $50 extra on top of your fees. In last three years, we haven't canceled even one session. And we do provide all six certifications, 5,000 plus model questions, study guides, and possibly the only EP which is offering all six standards training and study aids at this point in time. And we are proud to have a pretty high success rate, which runs at about 97%, the first time success rate. Now, the question comes is, why did I get myself certified in so many certifications? 
some of them actually asked me, Ellen, you did CBAP, that's good enough. Everybody recognizes CBAP. Why are you doing CBDA or CCA or AAC? I look, look at these certifications as a capability enhancement exercise. Trust me, even if you have worked for 25 years, 30 years, there's still a lot to learn in business analysis. And the way business analysis is impacting businesses, there are things which will continue to evolve. And I was listening to Delvin's uh, webinar yesterday, and he showed a very interesting presentation where it talked about data analytics, it talked about artificial intelligence. So things are changing and organizations will continue to change. And one way to stay current is to do some certification. And I happen to do most of them from IIBA because I focus on being a good business analyst. Then I obviously would like to become a better BA over time. And these certifications do help me to become a better BA. Fourth reason, it shows my commitment to the BA profession. So those of you who would like to continue your career as a BA, it's a great way to show your prospective employer, your current employer, your community, that you are committed to this profession. Trust me, analyst role is interesting because you will encounter many, many situations which will require deep analysis um, to make the project successful. Then just a quick summary of all the IIBA certifications that is offered currently. Uh, we will start with ECBA, which is mainly for the junior folks. And if you are starting your career, ECBA is a great certificate to start with. Then if you have got some experience, um, up to about 2.5 years to five years, then CCBA is a great certification. CBAP has been a pretty, I think the most well-known certification in the business analyst world and continues to be kind of the gold standard. Um, then those of you who are more interested to learn about agile business analysis, and we kind of understand that today about 90% plus projects are conducted in the agile way. So it's a good um, reckoner for you to learn about agile analysis and so your credentials with AAC. Um, Data analytics again is becoming a huge area of growth for businesses. Businesses are able to capture plenty of data today uh, at a lot less cost, especially with the advent of internet, with the advent of IoT, uh, mobility. Uh, so a lot of data is being captured in various forms. And if organizations can leverage both their internal data, which they have captured, over a long period of time, and the market data that is coming from different sources, um, they can create new products and services or enhance their existing products and services. The last one, which is cybersecurity, again, is becoming very, very important for businesses. Uh, businesses are digital today. They run on internet, and internet is not necessarily a very safe place. So we need to secure our applications and CCA guide is a pretty good standard. And I was actually looking forward to, to it for a long time because we did talk about application security, database security, um, but this standard has been really nice in terms of um, helping me understand uh, where to collect data, how much data to collect, when not to collect data, all this information came in pretty handy. So, um, I'm, I'm glad that I did that certification as well. Then coming to the requirements, as I said, uh, the good part is none of the IIB certifications mandate any kind of a specific education. So don't worry about that. It's more about your skills, your knowledge as a business analyst. For ECBA, there is no work experience, which is very good. Uh, for CCBA, you need to have 3750 hours in the last seven years. And on top of it, 2K is above 900 hours. Knowledge areas are essentially group of tasks that you perform. So it could be elicitation, it could be requirement analysis, it could be planning, or any of the six knowledge areas that IIBA 
mentioned uh, the ba box guide or you could have four knowledge areas above 500 hours and for cvap it doubles so you need 7500 hours in last 10 years and four knowledge areas above 900 hours there is a professional development hour requirement uh, uh, for the core standards it's not there for non-core standards or specialization standards so for ecba it's 21 hours in last four years for ccba it's exactly the same whereas for cbap you need 35 hours in last four years and for ccba and cbap you will also need two references who may be your career manager client or an existing cbap then when we compare the standards with respect to um, how much preparation effort you may need uh, the guidebook happens to be the ba work version 3 uh, for the core standards the fees vary depending on the country where you live uh, there's a 70 dollar difference in the membership fees uh, so that's what makes the difference then all iib exams are multiple choice question type but the rigor of the exam the time of the exam does vary significantly like for ecba you have a one hour test and it is 50 questions and which are generally quite simple questions for ccba the complexity level goes up a little bit the test is for three hours and you have 130 questions for cbap it is 3.5 hours and 120 questions so some of you might think how come when you have more time and less questions it's mainly because the com question complexity is a lot higher in CBAP, especially with the introduction of case type of questions. CBAP is a pretty, pretty tough test to take. So I do really congratulate uh, all the people who completed CBAP, uh, given the rigor and uh, complexity of the test. Preparation efforts, typically for ACBA, you are good with 80 to 60 to 80 hours for ccba 80 to 120 and generally for cbap we will recommend somewhere between 120 to 150 hours then coming to the specialized certifications um, none of them require any work experience none of them require any education even pd hours are recommended they are not mandatory there are no reference requirements but the guidebooks are different for each certification so you have an agile extension guide then for cbda i prepared with the iib analytics guide and for cca you have a cyber security guide the fees of course differ like 250 dollar for aac cbda is 450 dollar and cyber security is 350 dollar the question types again vary all mcq but the number of questions and the amount is different uh, typically a preparation of 60 to 80 hours is good enough for you to take any of the specialized certifications now that's roughly about two to three months depending on how much you can study in a particular month so how did i prepare for all these tests okay um, so most standards that I took test against, I did prepare between two to three months. Uh, so those of you who are keen, some of them come and ask me, Ellen, can I take the test in two weeks? I generally discourage them saying, you, it's very hard for you to prepare uh, for the test in 15 days or 30 days. Uh, of course, if you are not on a job, it might be possible because you're kind of devoting your full time to the test but that may not be the case for most people and you need to give time to assimilate the concepts and go through them a couple of times before you go for this test so i would always recommend that keep about two to three months time for the tests maybe for the simpler ones you keep two months for the complex ones like cbda and cbap you may keep three months then i do Kind of take print out of the books that is recommended by iiba i'm still a very much paper and pencil person although there is a lot of digital content available now uh, the reason why i take a printout and kind of read through the printout is 
uh, it's a lot less strenuous on your eyes. Uh, and then I can kind of make notes on the uh, printout. So I generally recommend taking a printout of the standard that you want to prepare for. And based on what I made notes of the books, I make clip note versions of the study guide. So most of my study guides uh, will have a lot less words compared to the IABA guide because some of the IABA guide content I may know from practice or from my knowledge. So I don't really have to worry so much. Uh, so some of the things that I do is to make sure that I revise the harder concepts at least three times. So whenever you feel something is difficult for you, spend more time on them. Then do create mind maps. Mind maps are very helpful. Uh, you can connect a lot of concepts using mind maps. So I have prepared mind maps for BA box um, tasks, BA box techniques, uh, for cybersecurity, any area, wherever I find some pictorial diagram can be created, I try to create them. Then, especially for the core certification, I focused on the purposes of the tasks because it's very important that we understand what the task is trying to achieve. Because if you can understand what the task is trying to achieve, you can always predict which techniques may help it, uh, which inputs may be necessary, which all stakeholders should participate. A lot of things will be clearer to you when you focus on the purpose of the task. Then for every technique, I also try to understand their strengths and weaknesses, which is again mentioned in Babok itself, um, because using the technique strength and the task purpose, I could create a connection between them, saying that if the task is trying to do this and the technique is good at something, then they too can be connected. Obviously, um, looked at which techniques can work very well to various tasks. And I also identified some techniques like flow charting or process modeling or brainstorming or interviews as very common techniques that can be applied across many, many tasks. I also created a reverse mapping saying, if this is the situation, which technique will best fit given the situation and that particular aspect helped me to answer a lot of questions in the text because generally we go by the forward mapping this is a reverse mapping so what are the examination tips that i have tried to follow during my iiba exam preparation um, generally i try to take a test on a day on which i am list stressed. So usually I try to take the test on a Monday because Saturday and Sunday are off days um, or if there is a short break that I can get due to some reason, um, I will take the test immediately after the break before I start my work week. Uh, usually I don't take tests on Saturdays. Uh, there's nothing to be dogmatic. It's just that because Monday to Fridays are typical work days, so I avoided Saturdays because of that reason. And mostly I try to take the exam in the second half of the day, not in the very early half, especially because I had to travel to this test center. I took my CBAP and CCBA exams in physical test center. But this aspect is no longer very helpful to all of us because now all IIBA tests, you can actually take it remotely although it's possible to take this in exam center as well. Uh, but given the COVID-19 situation, it makes a lot of sense to take the test from your home, uh, which is much more comfortable. Then I also got an external camera uh, because my laptop camera isn't very good. So in one of my tests, I actually struggled because the proctor could not see my photo identity very clearly. So I said, no, it's not a good idea. Then I kind of paid very little money, maybe about $20 to buy an external camera, which I connect to the laptop. 
so that the situation or the photos are very very clearer to the instructor or proctor. Then um, I kept my government issued ID proofs with picture, signature and expiry date because this is what IAB also recommended. So I kept it ready for the proctor to um, take the test. Uh, I also cleared the work area where I wanted to take the test because um, it is it is written in the books that you should not have anything on the table or below the table as well because the instructor or proctor actually checked the entire room where I was taking the test. And I of course prefer not eating too much, but also not to be empty stomach because uh, if you are empty, especially for a long test, uh, you will feel hungry and I will also feel the same thing. So I generally don't do that. And mostly before I go for any test, I go to the restroom uh, because that way I will not feel the pressure uh, in the test. Uh, then of course I try to remain as calm as possible um, during the test. Like we had a bad situation today, the system didn't respond due to some reason. Uh, but if you lose your cool, you actually make situation worse. Um, so it's my intent that even if I can't do few questions, it's okay. Uh, I will skip them and I will come back to those questions uh, later. So if I can't understand some question, it's okay. I will just kind of let it be there in the back burner and I will come back and attempt them later. Then I also observed my timing with respect to the test because um, these are time tests. So you don't have um, like 10 hours, 12 hours to prepare. So within the one hour, two hour, three hour period, um, I need to complete so many questions. So I always keep track of how many questions am I answering per hour and is it up to close to 45 to 50? That's what I target because uh, if I target 45, maybe I'll achieve 40. Um, and marking questions for review is a standard practice that I followed and that has really helped me because uh, I don't have to really worry about all the questions all the time. And I believe because I prepared well, um, I have been lucky enough to complete all IAB certifications in first attempt. I did not have to repeat any of the tests. Um, which is a good thing for me because uh, that saved me time, money, everything. Now coming to uh, whatever I'm explaining you, we have put it into a document called the Ultimate IAB Exams Guide. There are many, many more tips that you will find in the book because it's very difficult for me to explain all the exam tips because different exams are different and you need to prepare somewhat differently for each test and you will find this book free of cost uh, if you register at subsidy.net. Uh, coming to our organization as I said before, we guarantee you passing the IAB exam in the very first attempt. That's a promise from us to you. And there are already 700 professionals who have done it and you possibly would be the next one with us. Uh, that's all that I wanted to cover today. I am open to take any of your questions. Thank you so much, Ellen. We did uh, get quite a few questions, uh, so that which is great. Um, the main questions, though, I, I, find, I see a lot of questions around uh, professional development and PD hours. Uh, can you share your perspective on how you uh, how you manage to uh, to accumulate the PD hours required PD hours for the for the certifications? Uh, okay. Yeah, obviously uh, for me it's a little hard because uh, most of the time I took the test uh, even when there was no guidance available. Um, so mostly I did self training. Uh, sometimes I did take advantage of my colleagues' trainings as well. Like um, I have Peter Johnson as my colleague, Laura McCoy as my colleague, um, Tom Tomasovic 
as my colleague who are very senior BAs. Uh, so whenever they conducted the session, I sat through them and I also asked them lots of questions whenever I have had doubts. Uh, so for the non-core certifications, anyway, it was not mandatory, so uh, it's okay. And mainly because I took the CBAP training seriously, uh, it also sufficed the need for CCBA and ECBA. So for you guys, the situation is very different. Today, there are plenty of providers, uh, including my organization, Adaptive, who provide CUPD hours. But when I took CBAP, long, long back, I took it about eight, nine years back. Those days it was 21 hours, not 35 hours as it is today. And it was really hard to get a provider. So I kind of went with an online training institute, which provided me the training those days. Right. Continuing on that, uh, if you could share uh, your perspective on how how you can track uh, track those hours. Is there a specific way of tracking hours uh, on, on, your, on your end or um, are there any methods for uh, tracking? Yeah, I generally use an Excel workbook. Uh, maybe I can show you that Excel workbook if you would like to see. Uh, it's a very simple system. It's not very complicated. So what we do is or whatever I advise to my students as well. I'll just show you. Uh, plenty of them. Maybe I'll take this one. For example. So mainly track your project hours uh, using the start date and end date concept. And what we I did is I kind of found out that it's possible that one would work full time or part time in a project. Okay, so if you're working full time, it's good, you can accumulate the hours. And generally, I treated 120 hours per month of working. And I kind of created a formula that tells me most likely I would have worked around 2300 hours uh, in that month. Uh, although I actually work more than these hours. But I generally stick to the international norm saying uh, most people work 120 hours. So even if I might have worked 150 hours in that month, um, I discounted about 20% for other kind of activities. Um, and then I distributed the hours in various areas. And some of the areas where I spend usually more time, uh, like requirement analysis, it's very natural because um, as part of BAs, we are supposed to spend good time in requirement analysis, understanding the details of the requirement. So I generally give more hours to that. Um, but I have been in a sense pretty lucky uh, to have worked in the entire six domains for various projects. Um, so because I'm a full time BA, so it has never been a difficult thing for me to get the required hours. Uh, suppose IAB asks 7,500 hours, I would probably qualify for 21,000 hours because it, it has been such a long journey. Of course, if you take last 10 years, it might be 15,000 hours or so. I am a full-time BA. So I spend my entire day, evening uh, in researching business analysis, in helping other business analysts. Uh, so it's not very hard for me to get the experience hours. Uh, for you also, if you have spent considerable time in business analysis, it will not be hard. So please track your start date, end date, what percentage of the time you spent on business analysis, and then you can actually distribute the hours based on a gut feel, because it's very hard to uh, really track time at the level uh, of knowledge area. Usually we don't do, but you would have a kind of a fair sense saying in which area did I spend what, how much time? Did I spend 30%, 15%, uh, 20%? You can take a kind of a rough percentage and put it. Okay, Liva. Thank you, thank you, Alan. Uh, the next question Go. is, the next question is about, uh, 
can do I have to go through each certification to get to CBAP? For example, do I have to do ECBA and CCBA to finally be able to take the CBAP exam? Absolutely not. Uh, you can take uh, CBAP exam directly as long as you meet the qualification criteria from IIBA. Um, but it depends. A lot of time I would suggest somebody to take a look at the CBA and clear it up because CBAP is a tough exam, as I said before. Uh, so if you have, if you're not kind of pretty confident that you can clear CBAP, um, kind of think of going in a step manner. A step manner always helps um, than just trying to jump into CBAP unless you're really confident of the CBAP exam. And trust me, it's not an easy exam. Um, so don't um, too much overstretch yourself. 10%, 15%, I can understand. But if it's a stretch of 50%, please don't do. Uh, it's maybe better to kind of take a look at CCBA, complete it uh, before you go for CBAP. Great answer. Uh, a lot of questions around uh, references. Uh, so when you shared uh, your slide earlier about the different certifications and references needed, um, can you elaborate when you talked about uh, career manager? What is the definition according to you of a career manager? Does it have to be your supervisor? And what if they're no longer part of the company you worked for? Uh, true. I think uh, the literal meaning is actually your supervisor, one who does performance appraisal for you but i don't think it's an expectation that the manager continues to be your current manager no the manager can be past manager as well uh, but out of the two references one reference we expect it to be a current reference which is what is written in the handbook um, so that could be a current client as well need not be a current manager it's good to take it from a current manager, but you can take it from a past manager as well. Right. So the next questions are, as are, are around the specialized certifications. And uh, uh, one uh, person for the audience is actually planning to take the AAC ex uh, certification exam. What, uh, apart from the Agile extension, are there any other resources that uh, I would need to prepare for the exam? Generally not required because what I have seen most of the international exams, including the exam from IIBA, they're very focused on the guidebook. So if you understand the guidebook reasonably well, uh, you really don't have to go around and uh, look for other resources. Um, you may read something. I'm not saying that they, they, it's not good to read more, uh, but generally I would say stick to the guidebook and be very conversant with the guidebook. If you're very conversant with the guidebook, you will typically do well in the exam. And thank you. And the same uh, goes question goes with cybersecurity. I, I would like to prepare for CCA. Yeah. Uh, CCA uh, however, however, I do not have knowledge on cybersecurity. What are the materials I should be focusing on? Uh, cybersecurity is a bit technical standard. Um, compared to all standards that IIBA has, cybersecurity has a lot of technical stuff. Um, so if you do not have absolutely any experience in security, uh, do prepare well, uh, but the guidebook provided by IIB is pretty good. Uh, we do provide some kind of study guide and question bank for all tests, be it AAC, be it CBDA, be it CCA. You may take a look at our study aids as well. And we provide instructor training as well. Um, right now we are offering it for four standards, um, but if there is demand for AAC and CCA, uh, we will be happy to do that. Uh, we have two trainers on board uh, who are certified for CBDA, CCA, and AAC, and multiple trainers for CBAP, CCBA, CBA. 
Excellent. Uh, a few people asked about um, how can I be familiar with the BA techniques uh, as, as we have to know and understand each technique? Would you have some uh, tips you can you could share with us? Good. I think one of the things I just said to you, uh, do register on this portal called subfree.net. In that, you will find a book called 108 BA Techniques. Um, uh, this is free. There's no charge for that book. And it's a wonderful book with many, many techniques. Uh, in fact, uh, some of you may say, where from you we found 108? Uh, a lot of them are actually split off techniques mentioned in BA Box. Uh, like say BA Box says a technique as uh, stakeholder list, stakeholder map, and personas. We actually write it as three techniques because they are actually three techniques. Uh, just that they are grouped under a single technique name uh, under uh, the BA Box guide. But well, that's a wonderful book. Uh, you can take a look at that. Uh, then we also published another book uh, in collaboration with uh, Lucid Chart, uh, where uh, we worked with Lucid Chart, and that book has worked out examples of BA techniques using Lucid Chart as a tool. So these are two great resources available to you uh, without any cost on BA techniques. Great. Uh, we'll take. A, I'll try to take a few more questions. Um, is there a reason why uh, I should avoid uh, taking an exam? You mentioned on Saturday. Ah, uh, okay. That's mainly reason because if you are working, and most of us work Monday to Friday, except maybe professionals in the Middle Eastern region, uh, they may be working uh, usually Sunday to Thursday. Their timings are different. Uh, but in most part of the world, people work Monday to Friday. And that's the reason why I don't want to take a test on Saturday, because I would have been part of some discussion. The week might have gone well. The week might not have gone well. There's always a probability uh, that something doesn't go well in a particular week. Um, and you are not in a great frame of mind. Uh, whereas when you look at Monday, um, whether the week was good or bad, the effect would have come down by the time you come to Monday. So precisely, uh, I'm taking advantage of this uh, two-day break to rejuvenate myself to take the test. Great. And the last uh, last couple of questions around, uh, you know, you talked about uh, uh, cameras and uh, you purchased an external camera. For your laptop, are we expected to turn on our cameras while giving taking the exam? And are we able to to take what what are we able to take with us if we are? Uh, can we take a blank paper and pens? Of course you can. Um, you can take a bottle of water as well with you. The camera needs to be switched on. The proper observes you. Um, so without a camera, you will not be allowed to take the test because it's a remote proctored test. That's correct. And uh, I think I have one more, more one time to take one more question. Uh, is it uh, is it possible to pass CBAP with self study? It's not impossible, but quite hard. Uh, people have passed, uh, but there is a requirement of 35 PD hour, which requires you to have access to a faculty. Uh, so if you have access to a faculty um, through email or some kind of a group webinar, it is allowed. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend anybody to do self-study for CBAP. It's very hard. It's okay for ECBA or maybe AAC, the standards which are of little lesser complexity. For CBAP, if you really are serious, uh, better take a faculty lecture. Perfect. And just one last question about the Succeed uh, website is succeed.net, uh, correct? Yes. 
Okay, well, that's all the time we have. Uh, we haven't been able to answer all questions. So what we will do is we will take uh, the unanswered questions and include them as part of the recording. And uh, the recording will be available in the archive section of our webinar within seven business days. Ellen, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and we really appreciate it. Everybody, thank you for attending and your patience as well as we had uh, technical difficulties. Uh, have a good afternoon, good uh, morning, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you, Libra. Thank you, Terry.